Hello Aquaponics lovers, today a special video, I want to interview someone who's got an interesting channel, a channel about life uh, in a micro, microscopic level. Uh, the name of the channel is Microbe Hunter. Uh, this person uh, is called Oliver and he's going to sp uh, spend a bit of time with us to explain us how we can explore the life in our aquaponics system. Just before this interview, I remind you that if you want to go further with aquaponics, uh, you are welcome to join the Aquaponics Revolution community. There is a link into the description of the video just below. And once you join the community, you will receive a welcoming package with some critical information to start your aquaponics system in the best condition, understand the different ratio and limits uh, to respect in aquaponics, and to start producing some food in your own backyard. Uh, without further ado, you, let's go into the interview. I invited you, uh, I mean, I asked you for your time, uh, yeah. if you wanted to share a bit of your experience with us. Yes, of uh, course. My channel, in my channel, we got people who are um, interested to grow fish at home. Mm -hmm. And we do this through uh, a technique called aquaponics. I mm -hmm. guess you, you heard about it, you know? We, I watched we a grow. few of your videos, of course. Oh, so, of course. Excellent. Thank you, uh, thank you. Many years ago, I used to have a home aquarium, uh, so oh, it's yeah. not quite, quite as much as an aquaponics, but I had a 110 liter uh, small uh, home aquarium, not anymore, uh, but that's uh, pretty much the only connection that I have to fish right now. <laughs> yeah, I know because I watched a few of your videos and you were describing uh, the LOD, you were saying that you used to yeah, have exactly. them in your aquariums. So I, I still thought have, you, I, I still have some here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So basically, what am I doing? Well, I am actually in my real life, in my non-YouTube life, I'm a biology teacher. I've, I've been uh -huh. teaching school biology for now 20 years, over 20 years. Uh, but from my training, university training, I'm a microbiologist. So I changed my uh, my job. So I have. Uh, a degree in research uh, microbiology um, and with uh, a my thesis was specifically on bacteriology so on, on studying bacteria mm -hmm. and uh, microbiology and uh, was also much contained much uh, DNA studies a lot of biochemistry um, and some parts were very theoretical and I th think a little bit yeah very laboratory uh, it was laboratory biology. Yeah? Yeah. So I was a little bit missing uh, the, the natural aspect, uh, natural observation. I was missing a little bit the hands-on um, observation part uh, of my studies a little bit. And sure. uh, so this is why I later on um, then uh, I decided to pick up a microscopy um, also as a hobby and uh, to do a little bit more natural observation. So um, I kind of uh, tried to in that sense, uh, catch up on the things that I did not do so much during my university studies. So a few years ago, um, I tried then to also share my passion of biology, not only with students, but of course, then I also made a YouTube channel. And this is where we are right now. Yeah. Uh, so concerning, uh, of course, bacteria and uh, concerning, well, these, I don't know, you, now you do not see them. These are not bacteria, what you see over here, but these are ciliates, it's paramecium. Yeah they eat bacteria yeah uh -huh. um, yeah so I, it's uh, euplotus it's another ciliate yeah and uh basically it's a water sample that i have over here from a little jar it contains oh, elodea nice. Um, nice. and and if you look at it uh some of the elodea doesn't look so nice anymore it doesn't look very healthy it got brown the leaves are kind of uh and that's a good sign for me Ah, yes, yes. Because, <laughs> because this means that there are microorganisms are growing on here. Um, and sure. uh, you see, it's a little, it's a slightly different perspective here. Now, concerning the ecosystem of water, I had my, a home aquarium many years ago. And it is, of course, I don't have to tell you, it's a very complex thing. Sure. And it's, it's a very complex thing. Uh, for example, I can talk about the uh, experience of aquarium. If you change, for example, the lamp of the aquarium, this can all of a sudden cause the growth of certain algae because the frequency of the light is different. Yeah, um, yeah. If you change the frequency of feeding the fish, this can have an impact. Uh, how sure. often you change the water, this can have an impact. So an ecosystem is a very complex thing. However, um, all of those microorganisms, also especially bacteria, are a very important part um, of an aquarium and also of an aquaponic uh, system because uh, they are completing the so-called the carbon cycle. So all That's of the really waste, good. exactly. So all of the waste that the fish, for example, produce, um, uh, basically have to, has to be decomposed. 
And the microorganisms, uh, they uh, break it down. The heterotrophic microorganisms, they break it down. They produce carbon dioxide and they're removing again the carbon from the system in the sense that the carbon dioxide, it's actually not a completely closed system, is able to leave again and into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. in, in a very ideal system, in a completely closed uh, system, that's very, very difficult to do. I mean, there are some people, for example, who try to do this at home. They try to have an aquarium or a system which is completely closed off. Yep. Um, so the only thing that is only light energy that's able to enter it. And then internally, the carbon dioxide, which is produced by the microorganisms, is used by photosynthesis by the plant. But it's very difficult to, to do something like that. And so what I've seen is, is that, uh, and I've also seen it in one of your videos, recent videos where you said that you're going to exchange the water of your aquaponic system um, uh, because, and that is also something that you have to do in, in a home aquarium because it's very difficult to maintain i think a stable system yeah um, yes. and uh, concerning bacteria yeah, yeah. yeah please mm -hmm. <laughs> no i was just going to ask uh add something um in an aquarium um the nitrogen is basically breathing mm -hmm. up because we, we keep feeding the fish Yes. Um, so basically it starts as a ammonia, yes. then uh, it goes into nitrite and then nitrate. And in an aquarium, uh, it builds up unless you have a lot of plants yes. that are consuming this uh, nitrate. Yes. And you harvest the plants, you trim them. Uh, very often it builds up. That's why uh, we need to renew the water. Uh, exactly. We say like one third every, every few weeks. Yes. While in aquaponics, we have a system that is a bit more uh, complete, a bit more mm -hmm. elaborated. Uh, so we got so many plants and we have so much crop that uh, the nitrogen doesn't increase that much, but it still increases a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, when I have free water, you know, when it's winter and we got a lot of rain, I can take this opportunity to renew a bit of water in the system. So the yes. beauty of aquaponics is really that we, we uh, preserve the resource and we don't have to renew so much water so often. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In my aquarium, for example, because uh, yep. nitrites are very poisonous, uh, so the bacteria con convert into nitrates. Plants can That's use right, this yeah. as well. And then I always had to remove uh, a lot of the water plants, some duckweed that was floating on top and some other, or, or elodea that was growing. And that's actually a good thing uh, because of, we're adding food for the fish, but of course we also have to remove again uh, uh, organic material. And yes. I think one, one of the difficult things is uh, that I found is, is one has to be really careful that the, the nutrient content uh, in a body of water is not too high. Because what happens is, is if you have too many nutrients, organic nutrients, then the bacterial growth uh, increases very rapidly. And uh, growing bacteria are pretty bad because they take away a lot of oxygen. And uh, this can actually mean that also the higher organisms, like for example, those ciliates here, they require a lot of oxygen. And when the bacteria grow too quickly, then the ciliates are not able to keep up eating the bacteria and it goes out of balance. Yeah. So uh, yes, keeping yes. this delicate balance is, is very important. And um, yeah, usually, uh, at least this is what have I found, is, is if you add too much food to the fish, and then this can quickly cause the system to, to yeah, tip over yes. and then you have an explosion of bacteria and then the whole thing dies down. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> that's why it's very hard to balance. Yeah. Uh, the beauty with aquaponics is that we are working with uh, larger, um, larger volumes. Yes. So yes. there is a kind of buffer effect. You know what I yes, mean? Yes. Yes. Uh, so even if you overfeed the fish a bit, uh, the system can take it. There is a bit of variation. Yes. The system can take it more easily than in a small aquarium. In a small aquarium. Yes. The, yeah. That's the reason why. Um, if you if you look online, if you look at aquaponics online, you will often see some very small aquaponic system that you put mm. on your kitchen mm. to grow some uh, herbs but they, they don't work because as you say, it's too hard to balance yes, between yes. the quantity of fish food you give to your fish and the biomass of bacteria you have. Yes. The, the, the balance is too, too hard to, to get right. If you, you, you right. just need one day to overfeed the fish, and you basically kill the whole ecosystem. Exactly, exactly. So, yes. uh, yeah. In this bigger actually, volumes, it's, it's easier. easier. Yes, yes. Uh, that's what I uh, found with my aquarium. And if you do not change water regularly, it, it can go out of balance quite quickly. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do here is, is I don't know if this is, you're able to see this a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah we uh, can see. I mean, not uh, not very well, but we can okay, see. You know what, uh, I, will little go up with a, I will go up a little bit with a magnification. I have to go up a little, yeah. a little bit with light intensity here. OK. Oh, nice. um, yeah. Yeah. This, this down here, for example, is an air bubble. And that's a silly, it's a Euplotus is uh, okay. the name. And I don't know if you're able to see this very uh, well, but uh, there are these little dots that you see floating around here. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. 
uh, you, these are bacteria and debris and so on, and they have little cilia, little hair that move, and they use those hair to move around, but at the same time, they also uh, move the water with the particles around and they eat that. Uh, so this is actually, uh, and they digest it internally. And of course, they really release carbon, they, of course, they release carbon dioxide. So we yeah. see that in the, it's a kind of, uh, they're decomposing the things. Sometimes you actually see them, uh, you see smaller ones here uh, as well. Yeah? That, that, that's over here, that's a diatom. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes they actually like to be next uh, to an air bubble because they need oxygen. Yeah. Uh, so I they will see. sometimes so they come in the brief on the air bubble, right? Yeah, because there's an oxygen gradient, yeah, yeah. and uh, they are able to follow the oxygen gradient. Uh, right now, you do not see this so much, but uh, sometimes if there is a, a, a smaller air bubble and much water, then sometimes you can actually see that they build around there. And also next to plants, because plants, they produce oxygen by photosynthesis. And sure. that's also where you sometimes can see them uh, uh, quite often. But actually, what we see here is, is, is kind of kind of completing this, this uh, the carbon cycle, where they take in organic material and, and they break it down. Yeah? And uh, they divide it. And, yeah? and of course, if you Very have another, yeah? And over here, although difficult to see this here, is, is a diatom. OK? Yeah. Uh, so, so that's a microalgae, yeah? Uh, yes, exactly, yeah? Uh, also yeah. single cell. Um, and, and you so see this one is full of uh, silica, right? The, the diatom yes, exactly. The, the, the shell silica the shell. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if I'm able to see something else here. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, I mean the, the diversity is here not so high. It depends uh -huh. a little bit on the sample. Sometimes you see a lot sure. of different. Uh, this, it, some, there were many more, but I think they were kind of all going to the side somewhere uh, because. And this were, sample uh, is from a pond, right? Ah, this, no. Uh, yes. Uh, here, that's a that's a paramecium here. Okay. Okay. It's apparent maybe I can go even higher a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's already too dark here a little bit. Uh, and I have to refocus. And then usually they go so quickly that they're, uh, here it is. Oh, very, very nice. Yeah, that's a single cell, uh, also a paramecium over here. Yeah. You can also so, see the little hair. Yeah. And this uh, sample, <laughs> this sample here <laughs> is not from a pond, it's from a river. Uh, ah. Some weeks ago, some weeks ago, I was uh, visiting the Czech Republic. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I saw the video. Uh, I yeah, very nice. the video, and I took some Elodia along, and uh, this is still this jar here. Um, of so when you went so... rafting, right? You yeah, went exactly. rafting with your yeah. family, and you took some in the jar. Okay, very yeah. nice. And I left it in here now for a few weeks, and it was growing a little bit, but some of the leaves kind of turned a little bit bad, and this yeah. is a sign that uh, the, there were some uh, some microorganisms uh, growing uh, growing on there. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the. The, the sample that I have uh, chosen. So that is basically these are my mini aquariums that I keep right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, so, Lucia, I, I have mine as well here. Uh, <laughs> ah, I see. Yes, yes. Well, generally, um, if uh, there are people who are doing aquaponics and who think about maybe buying a microscope uh, because they yeah. also want to observe not only their fish and their plants, but actually also the microorganisms, um, I think it's a pretty good connection because uh, putting water samples under the microscope is a very popular thing that people who are interested in microscopy like to do. It's very popular yeah. because it's relatively easy to do. Um, you have to take a water sample and then simply put it on a microscope slide. I mean, I've got one here. Many people already have seen this already, maybe. Yeah? So uh, simply a glass slide and you put a small drop uh, of uh, pond water and then a, a cover glass on top of it. And then you simply put it under the microscope and then you can yeah, basically see, see it. It's a little bit out of focus again here. Um, and uh, one of the problems that beginning microscopists have is, is what they do is, is they simply take some water, you know, simply some clear water, and they put it on the microscope slide and they don't see anything. And the reason is, is because the concentration of microorganisms is sometimes too low uh, because yeah. they like to sometimes settle down on the ground because this is also where the sure. decomposing leaves are. Um, yeah. And so I always recommend is take a little bit of, of some decomposing material, some sludge, yeah, some slimy stuff or scratch off something from some rocks. And the rule is, is if you're able to see something with your eye that there is something there, you might not be able to see the microorganisms, but you see that there's, it's kind of a little bit dirty. Yeah. 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 Uh, then that's a good thing. Then that's something that you want to observe. But if it's completely clear, um, then it's also probably difficult to actually observe under the microscope. Yeah? Sure. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. So you have to, you yeah, have to make sure. That's a really that... good tip, actually. Yeah. Because if it's the surface water, what we can have is maybe some microalgae for some maybe phytoplankton or zooplankton that is swimming, maybe some Daphne mm -hmm. or copepods. But the likelihood are probably lower than if we go yes. deep or if we go into the filtration or in the grow bed where we got a lot of yes. bacteria activity. 
that's yeah. where we should probably uh, yeah. have a look, right? Uh, of course, there are so-called phytoplankton, which is floating inside the water, especially if you have a pond that is very green. You know, there's a lot of yeah. phytoplankton yeah. floating around. But even there, I found that sometimes the concentration is not very high, so that where you put it under the microscope and you see it everywhere. So you have to look around and maybe there is some occasional... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what you have to do is, is you have to simply put it in a test tube or maybe in a jar and you have to wait for one day and then it will usually settle down and then you see that it's much more green on the bottom and you take a sample from that. Oh, you know, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you just do not use the water which is too, maybe it's a little bit green, but a little bit green sometimes is not enough to see a lot of uh, the microorganisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, see. my mobile phone is now ringing. I have oh, to shut all it good, off. All and, good. Uh, <laughs> all good. Okay, so and sorry, so about you, um, this. you might have to edit no, no, this. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's fine. Um, so, what would you um, what would you think is the most um, approachable way to start? Uh, if people like people who follow me, they they want to discover a bit this uh, this micro world. And I'm not only talking about bacteria, but I'm also talking about some type of crustacean, yeah. um, or mollusk, okay. whatever. Um, what is What's the, the easiest way? The easiest, maybe cheapest or most yeah. affordable way for them to start discovering this uh, ecosystem. My advice is, is I will start again a little bit more basic. Is, is many people yeah. who are want to start with microscopy, they think, okay, I want to see bacteria. Uh, because the smallest ones, you know, they, you've heard about bacteria, you know that some of them can cause diseases, you know that they play an important role. Bacteria, the word is simply there. Um, however, I would say that bacteria are one of the more difficult and also one of the most uninteresting, sorry to say mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, things to observe. Um, um, so if you want to buy a very cheap microscope, let's say one that costs less or maximum 100 euros or $100, the basic introductory microscopes, with them you will not be able to see bacteria very well. Okay, yeah. because the quality is not there. However, however, in some cases, I still recommend that people start microscopy with those introductory microscopes because they simply cost very little and you can yeah. observe still the more interesting, larger organisms like the crustaceans, the water fleas, Daphnia, Cyclops, yeah, and they're pretty large and they do not need uh, uh, the top quality optics. Yeah? But if okay, you okay. really want to see bacteria, then you need a microscope that has a condenser. I'm just going to show you um, yep. the difference here because this is the primary difference. Sure. Um, um, so, for example, here, uh, the microscope that I have here, I actually did, yeah. Some microscope on the bottom, what they have yep. is they have an optical system beneath the stage. And there is a lever here. Uh, yep. And that's, uh, you can open and close this. And a microscope, if you want to see bacteria, even, yeah, you need at least to have a condenser here. But even okay. with that, you're not able to see them very well. Yeah? Uh, so that is the thing. But without a microscope, without condenser, I tried it. Um, it's almost impossible to see bacteria uh, unless you are staining them. Um, yeah, but then you do not see them move around. Yeah. So this is so uh, when basically. When you stain them, isn't it uh, mainly to see the gram there when you stain yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, basically, the problem with bacteria is that they're transparent. Uh, they're yeah. so small and they're transparent. Um, and uh, one way of actually making them visible is, is to use a stain like methylene blue or gram staining, which is a little bit more advanced. And then you can yeah. actually see them much better, even uh, with uh, microscopes that do not are not able to provide the contrast. But I would say that even that is a little bit more advanced already. Um, and yeah. I would say that people who want to start microscopy, and this is a recommendation I always give, and I know it's a question of taste a little bit, and some people disagree, is this, well, maybe if you're not sure, um, just start it by buying a microscope which is um, not a toy microscope, really not, but an introductory microscope, maybe one that even does not have a condenser uh, because okay. they're quite small, portable. They only have one uh, eyepiece to look through. Yeah. Um, they're sometimes also for children, but there are people who are able to do serious microscopy with that. Now, the image quality won't be the top, but some of those have a for the price is surprisingly good. Uh, yeah, allow you to already start the hobby. And then once okay. you've gained experience with that, then you can always buy a microscope and there is no end. I mean, uh, 400, 500, 600 euros, uh, thousands of euros even. Sure, uh, sure. But uh, you see, the thing is the following. Some people, microscopists say, well, don't buy the cheap microscopes because the image quality is not so good. But honestly, I think um, I say don't buy a microscope that costs 1,500 or 2,000 euros 
because you might not be happy with that one either and you've spent a lot of money. Yeah? I think that's a very wise advice. <laughs> Start, yeah. start low, see if you're interested, and then you can maybe exactly, invest a bit more. Exactly, because ultimately the 100, 100, 200 euros that you invested at the beginning uh, or dollars yeah, that you invested at the beginning is nothing compared to what actually the good microscopes actually cost. Yeah? Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, and honestly, there is the saying of, of a law of diminishing returns. A microscope that costs 10 times the money will not allow you to see 10 times more. Uh, no, for so sure, this, yeah. This is the thing. And especially with water crustaceans and the larger in, in cells, you can actually, you, do, you don't need a lot, uh, really. Yeah, um, that's and, what I, I use for um, yeah, yes. uh, basic even exploration. Those, I, have and, a, uh, this, yeah, I have the same one. Uh, yeah. And the microscopes like those USB microscopes, like the one over here, they give yeah. you a, a, an image a little bit that looks a little bit like, uh, like a stereo microscope, not three-dimensionally, but you need light from the top. Yeah. Uh, the microscope that here, has a light coming from the bottom. Sure, uh, yeah. And actually it's much easier uh, to see uh, microorganisms with a larger contrast uh, through a microscope if you've got light coming from the bottom. But because yes. those USB microscopes are so cheap, uh, I would actually say I'll try exploring the nature with that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a very so low it entry like barrier. 40, yeah. It costs probably $40 or something. Yes, and, the entry uh, barrier is very low. Uh, exactly. You, That's what I think. Is, and one thing that I like as well with, with those type of things is that when you got your sample, mm -hmm. you don't need to insulate um, every single uh, animal that you want to explore. You mm -hmm. basically have your sample, you put it through, and then you can just move the jar. Exactly. It yes. allows you to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't, I think it's not time consuming for people who just want to try, right? But exactly. then. Course. when when we are at your level of course a good microscope totally makes sense yeah so i i would say wow, okay there are not so many yeah this is already dried up uh, as i've seen yeah so you do uh, not yeah. see anything. yeah uh, basically what I, I want to say is is the following is is uh, microscopy um can be used also to support other hobbies so if you're i don't know i also so if you're stamp collecting if you're collecting stamps and then you can use a microscope like the one the usb one to ha have to look at the stamps or if you collect uh, insects, or if you collect, uh, um, yeah, or, or water plants, yeah, or minerals. Yeah? Um, so there is uh, sometimes this overlap uh, between microscopy and another interest that you have, and yeah. that's something that yeah, can yeah. be also um, explored. Yeah? Sure. And uh, and so different people uh, take my microscopy into different di directions, and uh, yeah, this way see that there, hobby is enriched in a certain in, in a certain. That's right. Way. Yes. Yeah? In, in, in aquaponics, we can use a microscope to observe the uh, micro ecosystem, but also uh, sometimes we may have, uh, we may buy some fish and they may have disease. Yes. So it may be useful to see if this is a surface parasite, we can do uh, what yeah. I say, a frotty in French, but we can just scrap the surface of the yes. fins. So the thing is, can... yes. Uh, you're talking about uh, using microscopes for bacterial identification or for, uh, for parasites. Or it parasite. can be also uh, bigger parasites, you know, like crustaceans or even uh, fungus. You know, we got uh, saprolenios, mm. saprolenia, which is the type of fungus that can grow on the fish. And mm. it can be useful to identify. Then we know if we need to insulate the fish and to yes. use some uh, methylene blue or other type of uh, exactly. uh, products to treat yeah. the fish. Yeah. So my suggestion here is the following. Um, in this yep. case, um, I probably would say that a compound microscope like I have is probably not so suitable uh, for, for two reasons. You cannot put uh -huh. the fish directly, for example, under the microscope. Uh, no, you have to sure. scratch something off. Um, and then when you see it under the microscope, sometimes um, yeah, you might be able to see it's some kind of a fungus, but a microscopy rarely is enough to actually do a detailed diagnosis. I mean, you just see that there is something there. Um, yep. So what I suggest is, um, uh, I've not tried this myself, uh, but if you suspect that there is a fungus uh, maybe growing on the fish and you see already something with the eye, with your eye, that there is something, some different color, then you can always use a USB microscope like you have and, and maybe put it on the fish a little bit and then without uh, harming the fish, you can actually see it much better what actually is there. Um, yeah, what I was thinking, yeah. what I was saying was uh, to scrap a bit the surface yes. of the fish to get a sample and then uh, watch on the on the microscope. That's what I used to do when I was uh, working in the fish farms yes, uh, to yes. identify. And sometimes we have also some fish who die uh, on uh, in the mm. fish farms. Mm -hmm. So you collect the dead fish and you get the gills a bit, you get ah. the liver, 
and, and you do a kind of dissection and then you watch in the microscope to see if you can identify any parasite or any yes, yes, uh, yes. anything that is a bit, a bit unusual then sometimes we just send it to the lab. It depends on, on the level yeah. of loss we have. But in aquaponics, we don't want to send samples to the lab because then it costs too much money. Ah, <laughs> yes. So if we can identify a few things by ourselves, it's always a yes. plus. I, I, I don't know exactly now how to what degree of depth or level you need to identify. Of course, you can then see that maybe there is some fungus going on or there's some kind of bacteria on there. But yeah. usually microscopes are not enough uh, to actually identify the species of bacteria. Uh, yeah, and then we need so to grow them, yeah? You need to grow them, you need to culture them, you need to do some kind of biochemical tests. But yeah. often it's enough to see, well, there is actually something there that should not be there. Yeah, sure. Uh, and this kind of helps to confirm a little bit. Um, but what sometimes what people ask me, uh, they write me emails and then they say, okay, I want to isolate some bacteria from my body and then I want to see if I have a certain disease. It, no, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work like this. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, talking about um, identification, I understand uh, mm -hmm. what you are saying, and I myself uh, did the studies as well. I have a master in food science. Ah, I, yes, yes. I worked yeah. a lot in microbiology to identify uh, the freshness uh, of ah, the yes. of the food, and mainly the seafood. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, and and as you said, we we used to. Uh, collect samples, swap samples yeah. or whatever, and then uh, we have different cultures and see what grows. Um, but uh, it seems that, I mean, it doesn't seem, but obviously you have a very good knowledge. And when you observe uh, some samples, you're able to identify some uh, microorganisms. Um, so do you have some books to recommend to yeah. increase um, our knowledge in this field? Well, uh, I think here you have to differentiate now identification of bacteria as microorganisms and identification of ciliates and, and larger microorganisms. As a matter of fact, I do have a book. I have to stand up to get it, to show it to you. So you might no have problem. to edit this out. Okay. Sure. Oh. So, unfortunately, it is a, okay, well, unfortunately, the book is in German, uh, yeah. but it's so good that I still recommend it. Uh, and there are now new editions of this, uh, but the original edition is called Das Leben im Wassertropfen, uh, The Life in a Drop of Water, it is okay. called. Uh, the okay. new editions, they look a little bit different, uh, but it is one of those uh, standard books that, uh, can be used to kind of uh, get yourself oriented. And sure. what it contains is it contains drawings over drawings over drawings over drawings. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Uh, so essentially, even if you do not understand the German, uh, at least then you know the name of the organism and the, it's just a general description. And then what yeah. I usually do is, is uh, I, uh, I find something that looks kind of similar, then I know the name and I type in the name into Google and then I see if uh, somebody has already identified it and actually has a picture photograph of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is actually this the way, so I think it's okay even if it's in German because I, I myself don't use the general description either. Yeah, yeah. And Do maybe, you think it's uh, possible to find it in English or only in German? I don't know. I have not seen it in English yet. Okay. I know that there are some English books as well, but uh, I'm simply used to work uh, work with this. It contains everything. It contains uh, uh, ciliates. It contains crustaceans. It contains um, yeah, di wow. diatoms here. Yeah. Uh, Very nice. Of course, every book, every identification book is a little bit limited because the biodiversity is so high. And at the very beginning, and that might be something again interesting, there's a theoretical section which talks a little bit about water quality, which are microorganisms you can find in which type of water quality. Yeah. Uh, because it can awesome. also be used to kind of detect or not detect, to determine the quality of the water based on which organisms you can find there. Because certain water organisms they need more or less uh, oxygen or nutrient sure. requirements. And this kind yeah, of uh, yeah. determines, helps you determine a little bit how clean is the water in, in a somewhat qualitative way. And there's a theoretical yeah. section here at, at the beginning. Yeah. You know, when, um, when, I, when I did my studies, uh, mm -hmm. I, I did my uh, degree in aquaculture. Mm -hmm. And w when I, I used to do um, a training on a cage, you know, it mm -hmm. was a mm -hmm. fish farming in cages. And uh, during my training, I tried to identify the impact of the farm on the environment. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I dove under the cages and I identified the spaces uh, that were growing there. 
And then I, uh, I tried to find if there were some bioindicator to yes. see if, um, if the farm had a negative impact. And indeed, it, it had a negative impact because, you know, it was intensive farming. Mm -hmm. So a lot of organic matters and the bottom was very muddy while mm -hmm. the natural environment was rocky with uh, some plants. And mm -hmm. underneath the cages, it was very muddy. So bioindicators are very interesting. And I, I guess yes. there are some, um, some very good things that we can use in aquaponics to see if our, aquap if our ecosystem is running properly. Yes, uh, yes. You know, the, taking different samples, samples in the fish tank, samples in the filtration, in the grow bed, near the roots of the plants. I think there are a lot of things that we can um, try to uh, identify and then mm -hmm. maybe not take some conclusion from that, but it can orient it to see exactly. if the ecosystem is working in the good direction or not. Yeah, uh, for example, I mean, water uh, samples like this, it's interesting if you take water samples over the course of several days, uh, you see mm -hmm. that the, the, the composition of microorganisms and so on is changing uh, as it breaks as it break down the plant material, um, temperature changes, light changes. So there's always some, something going on. And uh, um, you, you see that uh, today, what I find today is not the same as I find maybe in two or three days. Yeah? There's sure, always this sure. kind of a, a, a process, a dynamic process going on of, of a progression of organisms. And that's also one of the things that you're able to see. Or, for example, in aquaponics, I can Im imagine you can um, observe what microorganisms do you find in summertime compared to wintertime. Uh, there is yeah. certainly a, a big change there as well. Um, and That's it's right. simply interesting for me. Um, I'm not when I do all of these things here. Ah, see, for example, here now you've seen them all gather on the side here. Um, so, so for me, this is actually not. I'm not doing any any um, high level science here with uh, this here. I'm not now uh, yeah. uh, writing any publications or trying to identify new species or anything like that. Just observing, yeah. I'm just observing. Uh, yeah, yeah I, and that is the way that I have interpreted as a hobby uh, of microscopy. I said, okay, I'm going to make a YouTube channel. I'm going to keep it low level. Uh, I'm not going to put too much technical science into the whole thing because I don't have even have the time to research all of the details, yeah, sure. um, and to do a, a detailed uh, um, identification. But I think for well, me, I have to already, say, you, you, your channel is extremely interesting, extremely interesting. I don't know how you do because myself, uh, I try to, you know, with my military microscope, sometimes I try to yeah. identify things. But then if I want to comment it, it's not going to be that interesting. I don't know how you do, but you story tell in your explanations, I, I tell, you make it very, very clear and very interesting. I, I will tell you a little secret here. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the, I'll tell you the problem that I have with my YouTube channel is, is I do not have the time to do a lot of research. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the problem. Actually, if I want to go into depth, because even though I studied microbiology and all of these things, uh, if, you, if you find something here, you actually have to pull out the, do, uh, the, the publications and you have to do a little more in-depth sure, uh, research. Sure. Uh, I don't have the time to do that. And if I want to produce a video every week, um, I actually have to think of something that's kind of interesting that I can talk about without actually having to do a lot of preparation. So usually <laughs> what I do, and I'm going to tell you now how I do my videos, is yeah, I simply yeah, yeah. Uh, use my microscope. I, I collect a couple of, of, of video clips uh, without plan because I don't know what I find. Um, and I put it together into three or five minutes, and then I watch my video. Uh, and while I watch it on my mobile phone, I turn on the camera and I'm filming myself with a green screen, which I have here behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, because you see, up, uh, because you're, I'm always in the corner a little bit. So that's actually the yeah. green screen that I use. And I simply um, kind of narrate over my own videos that I've made. Yeah. Um, so I have roughly an idea, some points that I want to talk about. Um, but it's not scripted and it's not planned out in very much detail. So, uh, and I deliberately try to keep it at a very um, low level. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it shouldn't be too much too scientific, I think. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes it interesting. I think for people who don't have any experience because they can still understand what you're explaining. Yeah. while they discover new things that they haven't seen before. So I will tell you yeah. now, maybe I will tell you now another little secret that I have not talked yeah. about yet on my YouTube uh, channel. And uh, maybe I'm going yeah. to talk about this. Um, I'm also making the YouTube videos and the YouTube channel for my, my own students, of course. Uh, I've got students who watch this as well uh, because, yeah. and now I'm a little bit self-critical. Um, as a biology teacher, I'm not fully happy the way that biology has to be taught sometimes in school. Yeah. It is sometimes very theoretical. Um, you do not do any. Yeah, when I was in school, we were dissecting animals, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we were drawing them. And you're not allowed to do this anymore for ethical reasons. 
yeah yep, in some yep. countries yeah yep. uh, so 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 what we have to do is we have to do measurements we have to do experiments we have to make measurements we have to collect data and do graphs and and i've kind of felt a little bit like a bio, as a biology teacher we're kind of losing a little bit the connection to nature yeah 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 it's, it's not it's practical very, anymore yeah. yeah and it's not only that it's not practical anymore but it's it's practical in a very abstract way like practical of making graphs of how the yeah. oxygen concentration changes over time um so and but the exciting thing is sometimes is simply to to get connected more directly to your environment and this 100%. is something yes and this is something that was a little bit missing in the way that biology is taught or has to be taught because we have a curriculum to fulfill because sure. there is a final examination at the end Yes. And we're kind of, I was kind of, as a biology teacher, felt uh, that I'm not doing true justice to the field of biology. And this mm, was also a little bit, uh, a little bit one of the reasons why I then decided after some time, okay, um, I want to chart, start my own YouTube channel to kind of bring back nature a little bit. Uh, well, congratulations, you're doing it really well. And so actually, that, that was kind of my, 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 my idea a little bit, yeah. I understand, and that's something I think is uh, is also uh, it's it's a connection I have also with aquaponics. I think we can use aquaponics as a support to teach a lot of things uh, at school, because yes. in aquaponics you can use mathematics, physics, biology, yes. um, chemistry, a lot of things that you can apply and you can see what is happening on a small ecosystem, and then you can do whatever, um, you can learn everything from it, you know? And you yes, can yes. see the results, and you can understand why you do the calculation, why you study. And that's what I like. People like also to use a chicken. They take mm -hmm, a chicken yes. at home, and they, they ask the kids how quickly the chicken is growing, they show them how to measure it. So mm -hmm. it becomes practical, they, they see it, they can touch it, they can understand why they do the exercise. It's not just, it's not just data, on a piece of paper, then exactly, it becomes exactly. becomes something in their mind. It makes sense. Yes, and I sometimes feel. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm asking myself. I mean, uh, I, I, who says that uh, being able to draw graphs uh, and to measure data and, and do a controlled experiment? Who says that this is more or less important than a different approach to biology, like direct observation? Yeah. Um, so I think this is also part of it, and one should not forget about yeah this aspect as well and that's also yes. one of the reasons why i i I'm, I'm trying to with my with my youtube channel to do a little bit something like public education um and not get too uh, yeah too uh, not too much do too, too much high level science so for example yeah, in my, I mean, yeah in my youtube videos for example i'm doing this deliberately um uh, is is i always put a very at the beginning uh, or in the middle a very strong focus on, on where do I collect the sample from. That's what I was going to highlight. That's yes, exactly what I was going to say. You, we see where you get them. You, we see if it's where there is oxygen or not, yeah. uh, how you collect it, if it's on the bottom, on the surface. And it, I think it, it adds a lot to the, yes, to the, I, to the story. Yes. Uh, so when I was actually planning the YouTube channel, I was actually thinking about this. I mean, what, what could I do? And I felt this, I think uh, it should be uh, meaningful for a person to, who watches is to actually see the whole process a little bit, you know, the, the, the process, where is the sample? What is the environment to kind of connect the person? Otherwise, if I only show uh, this image, then it can also become very abstract very quickly. Yes. So yes. this is the reason why I placed my emphasis a little bit on this um, hands-on. Uh, uh, yeah. For example, I can also recommend, uh, really, uh, to some of your subscribers and viewers, there is another very good uh, microscopy channel around called uh, mm -hmm. the Microcosmos. Okay, Journey to the Microcosmos, okay. Um, okay. which is a professionally made one. Um, there is, and uh, I would say it, it's uh, the, it, super interesting. Um, okay. and, they're go and they're going into much more scientific depth. Um, so okay. they will actually, it's actually properly researched. There's a whole team um, of people working on this. Uh, I would say that probably, definitely not probably, I mean, the, the video quality of the things that are shown is, is much higher than even my videos that I have. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. uh, but it has a different approach where they actually go a little bit more into the scientific background. So that's also okay. a channel that I not, I'm not uh, connected to them, but that is also one of the channels, uh, microscopy channels that I really love to watch. And I've also made myself a, in one of the previous videos, a, a list and link um, of all other amateur microscopy people that I've uh, found on YouTube. 
um, yeah, so it's kind of an, a, a general shout out uh, to them as well. So if, yeah, so that maybe people who are interested in microscopy can also check out their channels. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. It's yeah. very nice to to share um, to, yeah. to share the different uh, yeah. different yeah. creators. Yeah, I, I just. Then, yeah, uh, I just want to show you a, a little bit uh, the following sure. uh, because people are always ask me what brand of microscope should I buy, and I say yeah. that's probably uh, that's a difficult question because um, I, I would say that um, it doesn't matter very much. Um, there are a couple of microscope brands, the traditional brands that are very expensive, they cost mm -hmm. a thousand euros and more with a basic setup, yeah. but they have very good support, so good uh, yeah replacement part service and so on. Um, yeah. But if you want to get a, some kind of a, a, a not the most basic level of microscope, but someone an intermediate one, you have to spend around three hundred to, to six hundred dollars or euros in that price okay. range, um, and then you already get a very decent device. But even for that, might be too much money for some people. So I would say is uh, yeah, around a hundred dollars or euros maximum it will also get you uh, introductory microscopes where you can already observe. Uh, yeah, basic nature observation and what they basically what they have is microscopes have is is um, they have a different objectives here and actually it's uh, often the quality of the objectives here that kind of also determines the price of the microscope yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, okay um, if people want to take pictures or videos I always highly recommend that they have a, a, a photo tube it is possible to take pictures by using a mobile phone camera but it's it's not as, as com convenient centering it is is very difficult and so on yeah um, so, and that's why I've uh, got in my one of my YouTube channels, I've got two of them. Um, I'm also presenting some microscopes and, and, but I would say to a large extent, maybe it's also a little bit a question of taste. Yeah? Sure. Uh, and uh, you know, yeah. now what we have, the quality of uh, mm -hmm. uh, video that we have here is amazing. Yes. So as I, I understand you say, it's, it's not good to put it directly it's not on convenient. The, on it the, gives yeah, good it's quality. Not convenient and you're going to move and everything. Yeah, exactly. But I was yeah. wondering, is there any support that you can clip directly yes. to the microscope? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes, there is. Uh, they do not even cost much. And uh, I would actually recommend that this is something that you try out. Uh, there are several, it's called uh, mobile phone adapters for microscopes. Uh -huh. uh, there are different ones around. I also have to show you some of that. I made also some in my video and you can clip yeah. them on here, but uh, that also has to be carefully aligned. Uh, it's very, okay. very, the alignment is very sensitive. Um, so what I generally recommend is, is that people who want to, I've uh, got my mobile phone here, who want yeah. to connect the mobile phone here, is, is that they uh, have, and that they buy a separate eyepiece connected to the adapter. And when they want to use uh, the mobile phone, they simply take, put it in into the adapter and simply exchange it. Yeah, because uh, the adapter sure. will be, the adapter will be perfectly aligned with the mic, with the eyepiece. Yeah. So it's easier to simply exchange the whole eyepiece adapter connection uh, yeah. than to always align yeah. it every time with the eyepiece. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. okay. That's a very good tip. Thank you for yeah. that. That's great. Yeah. So because sometimes so, you just want yeah. to observe and you want to take a picture, you just uh, take it out. Yeah. Take it out and put the other connection in here. Yep. Now I. So okay. Now for whatever reason, ah yes, this was the thirty-minute uh, automatic power off of the microscope. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, the microscope you got here, uh, what is the budget of this one? Well, this one is uh, actually also one that I have uh, um, made a recent year review. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it, it's uh, just newly released, uh, uh, quite new. It's, it's uh, I think it's a pretty good one. It's called the Stellar One. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the company sent it to me also for review. This one here um, comes in two different versions, a more expensive version, which costs around 600 euros. I'm always thinking okay. in euros. And one, I think, which costs around 400 euros, which is otherwise the same, but it has different um, ob objectives. But it's, I would say oh, it's already pr a pretty good one. Huh? Um, and for this price, do you have the uh, the camera with it, or is no? It no, cameras. Uh, camera is no always camera. separate. Okay. So you have okay. to for this camera, you also have to already count a few hundred euros. Um, okay, okay. How, however, um, I would say that um, there are also certain camera adapters where you can actually connect other cameras to it. Um, I, I say always, well, I mean, um, you, if, you, if you cannot afford it, maybe buy still a, a microscope with a photo tube and you can always buy this later. Um, and honestly, I think that's also my view. You do not need a lot of, you know, you do not need a lot of me megapixels. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is, that is uh, the thing. Um, uh, yeah, because the microscope's resolution is sometimes limited. This one has five megapixels. I got good results also with three megapixel cameras. Um, but I would say nine megapixels, 10 megapixels, I think is already too much. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. It's okay, yeah, but I mean, because yeah. you you have the optic anyway. You have the optic where you can zoom. Yeah, exactly. So why and would also, you zoom from the camera? Exactly. And and also the, the 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 microscope has a limited resolution anyway. And also sometimes the USB connection is too slow anyway to give a very smooth video. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you've seen this, but some of the movement of some of those microorganisms, um, yeah, is not quite as smooth because of the slow transmission. Yeah. Uh, I, see. Yeah. I see. So uh, there is also a limit in the system where I say it's it's not all. Yeah. So if you want to have a smooth video, ironically, uh, yeah, either you have to connect a good DSLR camera or you use a mobile phone again, <laughs> unless you have a fast uh, USB three connection. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so okay. it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of several factors, and because it can become complicated so quickly, I always say the best way is actually to start learning yourself a little bit and uh, yeah. not maybe so not invest. Too much yeah, exactly. That's why it's yeah. better to to start with a low budget uh, equipment, yeah, exactly, and, yeah. and then we can upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Oliver. And um, I have a. It's kind of a, what is your personal preference when you explore? What is mm -hmm. uh, the animal that you really you are amazed by? What is the best specimen you think we can find and and observe? Um, what I usually like to do, well, first of all, <laughs> uh, I like uh, to I like to get myself surprised a little bit. Um, so yeah. what I do is, is I go out to a pond, collect a water sample, and simply see what uh, I uh, yeah, find. One of the microorganisms that I like uh, to see a lot, I've seen it a few times already. This is a little bit of a question of luck. It's called Lacrimaria. This is a ciliate, which has a very, very long neck. And it, uh, it changes the neck and it goes hunting with a neck. Yeah. And it looks very fascinating under the microscope. So it looks, okay. every time when I see something like this, I like it. However, um, I would say that um, if you want to start out with microscopy, then simply put a few water fleas, Daphnia, Cyclops, and so on, yeah. water crustaceans yeah. under the microscope, because they uh, are quite large. Uh, they can yeah. also be, uh, and you can actually see the movement of the organs in them. Um, so it, it's quite uh, impressive and fascinating uh, to actually uh, to actually see them. Um, usually, what I also do is, is uh, when I uh, do uh, microscopy in school, um, to take along a water sample, and I usually try to enrich some of the paramecia or some of the ciliates here because the kids they want to see something move around. Uh, so it's more interesting to see actually those microorganisms. So what I do is, is you take a water sample and I take a, a small grain of rice or some grain of wheat and I crush it between two spoons and I put yeah. that into the water sample and this feeds bacteria and the bacteria are then eaten by them and they start to reproduce. Yeah. Uh, Very nice. So, yeah, and uh, by the way, here you can see that they have now accumulated next to the air bubble here. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they come in brief to the bubble and stay yeah, they see the oxygen gradient, and they're able to sense it, and they know where to actually pick up the oxygen. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So basically, I I, I say it's, it's it's those ciliates and uh, are quite uh, quite popular. I like to observe them. I've seen them already so many times. Um, and then sometimes what I do is is I I simply yeah observe them a little bit, and then sometimes you see different species that you have not seen before. Um, yeah, they might look okay. kind of similar to the outside, but if you go in detail, some of them are there can be different. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I've seen the, some amazing pictures of uh, yeah. simple crustaceans, as you yeah. were just saying, yeah. um, and I saw some pictures of uh, fluorescent light mounted mm -hmm. on a microscope. Have you tried those type of things? What is your point of view on on this? I am working on a an experiment, and I have not succeeded yet fully. Okay. Uh, okay. But what I would like to do, um, I can tell you right now, um, there is uh, normally you use ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting an ultraviolet source is kind of uh, problematic. Um, but what you can do something is you can try something like blue excitation fluorescence. And it okay. works like this that you, and I've been trying to do this, not fully successful yet. Maybe I did not get the frequency right. But I've, I'm exchanging or I've exchanged the LED here into an LED yeah. that pr produces a very, uh, almost ultraviolet light. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but you got to be careful because real ultraviolet light damages your eyes. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, um, and then you have to also put in a down here on the bottom a so-called a dark field filter to make sure that the light only comes from the side. Um, and then you take uh, algae or elodia and you have to place it into the dark for half an hour. Um, and then when you put it under the microscope, at least in theory, then you should see the chloroplast glow red. Because what happens is 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 uh, when you put it into the dark. 
uh, then yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the enzymes, they shut down and all of the energy is, is used up for photosynthesis. And then when you get blue light, it takes about three minutes for the photosystems to reactivate. And until this time, the energy cannot be used for photosynthesis, but it's converted to red light and then can be seen. So you can actually see the different uh, chloroplasts and so on, it's glow red in theory. Wow. Uh, wow. Okay. That's called blue light excitation, but I think it did not get the frequency correct. But this glow is also very low. So you might need to use a camera which is very sensitive. I'm trying to figure okay. out a system here um, to do fluorescent microscopy. Um, yeah, wow. with, uh, yeah, for amateur purposes. Yeah. Well, In, I, I will make sure to check your channel and yeah. <laughs> to not uh, miss this video. Yeah. And um, actually, for everyone here, I just want to remind that uh, your channel is called the Microbe Hunter. Yeah. Yes. So Thank you very much, you, brother. Yeah, and, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I, I will of course also give you a shout out on my channel. Of course, <laughs> no question about that. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and uh, awesome. I don't know. I, I hope a little, at least uh, maybe uh, this is also a, a, a good start for other uh, micro, uh, microscopy interested people to get more active a little bit um, in, in YouTube or aquaponics people. And maybe it's possible to do those interviews uh, also more frequently. That would be kind of nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. I really appreciate the collaboration yeah. and uh, yeah. I want to learn a lot from you. I really <laughs> enjoy your channel. Uh, Thank you very do you much. Have any, do you have anything to add for? Uh, to share on uh, on my community <laughs> uh, on your community I think my advice is the following um, generally it doesn't matter what you actually want to do as a hobby or as not as a hobby but I think it's good be, especially nowadays we, we want to learn new things and it's natural exploration and in that sense I think many people who are doing maybe aquaponics aquariums microscopy even astronomy I think we all share this one passion for the nature for the environment and I think that is one of the things where we're kind of all united a little bit even if the directions are a little bit different uh, 100%. Uh, but here we found now a, a place where this is kind of an interesting overlap uh, between microscopy uh, and uh, yeah, aquaponics yeah Yes. Mm -hmm. What I like in your channel is that, uh, you know, we are all excited to know what's happening on Mars and all, all those yes. planets with exactly. Elon Musk and everything. But we don't even know what we are working on. We don't even know what is happening in our river or on the water we drink sometimes, you know. So there is so much to learn. And so I, I, when, I when you look in the microscope, you see those shapes. It looks like monsters sometimes. You're like, is it possible? This is living here. I've never seen this. Yes. It's just here. I think because you said this, if there's one last thing that I want to share is yes, I want to share yeah. a story um, which uh, happened many years ago already. Um, yeah, I was. We, we have in school we have microscopes and we just um, yeah, normal lesson we talk about the cell and I basically uh, told my students or showed them how to put an onion cells, how to put them under the microscope so that they can also see some cells under the microscope. Yeah. Yeah, I've done this so many times, the standard thing, right? And I've seen this one girl all of a sudden in the back row and she was shaking her head and totally frustrated with the microscope. And it's okay, you need help, right? You have a problem seeing it. And I said, no, no, I, I don't need help, I, I, I'm fine. So, so why are you shaking your head? And, and, and yeah, what's the problem? I says, yeah, I didn't believe there is so much that I didn't think about, yeah? If you just look at the small piece of onion, there are so many cells it's so complex, life is so complex, there are so many things out there, it's so overwhelming, yeah? Um, and that is, is, I think, this emotional connection a little bit that I think that's so important, yeah? To realize, wow, uh, yeah, you, we don't have to go to Mars, it's great. Uh, I, I like uh, space travel and so on, yeah? But uh, there is also this space travel into the small world of, of, yeah, of microorganisms. It's so it, true. It's a new universe, yes. yeah, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the thing that kind of also fascinates me a lot uh, in this. And that's yeah. why even though I've been doing this stuff now for so many years, um, yeah, I've not lost my interest in it. There's so many new things to discover and to develop yourself. And I think that's the case in, in pretty much any field um, yeah, yeah. That, that you have. There's lots to learn. Yeah. That's true, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Oliver. Um, yeah. A big thank for your time and uh, I hope you. we can collaborate more in the future. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the invitation. It was the first interview ever that I've given in that sense it was a big honor. Uh, honor oh, to thank you so much. That's <laughs> great. I'm very happy to be the first one to interview you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, and then, yeah.
Bye bye, bye, bye Oliver. Bye bye. So thanks again to Oliver with his uh, channel uh, Microbe Hunter. I wish him the very best. Uh, it's been very nice to spend some time with him. I really enjoy watching his video and I really recommend all of you, if you have a bit of time, go into his channel and have a look at what he's able to see from his microscopes. I think it's very interesting. Myself, I also like doing it and I may invest in a bit more equipment, but at the moment I have a very small microscope and uh, I will share a few of the videos that I have of the different spaces that we have in the aquaponic system but I really think there is a lot to explore from our backyard. So I hope you enjoy this interview and I see you in the next one. Bye bye!